This is RuPaul's Drag Race episode nine. Can you believe it? Nine, and it's LADP. Um, so it is. We open with a reading challenge. Um, they, which I really kind of felt like it was kind of lackluster. There's usually a few really good zingers, and I thought all of them were like, oh yeah, and some just to, to, to bad. What was funnier? Then the actual reads, which they should be preparing the whole season because they know it's like one of those things where you know there's a reading challenge, there's a snatch game, uh, you know, there's going to be a sewing challenge. Like, you better learn how to use a sewing machine, that whole thing. This is one of those things they should know. But, you know, to me, it's not like you have to be able to read to be a, to be a drag queen. So, you know, it's just like, oh, okay. And um, I need to address something. Which is that I have seen every season of RuPaul's Drag Race, including the first season. I watched it uh, when it when it premiered. I've seen every season when it came out, all the All-Stars. I think I missed one. I think I missed the Christmas special, but I have watched them all. I used to, before I had a child, watch all, every episode ten times. You know, you put it on, you play it, you go clean the house, you, you write in your journal, talk on Facebook, and you just watch it over and over and over again. I say that because I usually kind of understand where they're coming from, where uh, I get what's going on. I, I don't, I don't get silky. It looks like a lot of people on Twitter don't get silky. I don't hate her. A lot of people really hate her. I just go, huh. Like, I can see it, but the humor is just not getting into me. And I don't have a problem with her. But the reason I say that maybe it's me is that... Um, Maybe she's a really good in-person presence because the other queens seem to like her. Like, they might evaluate, like, girl, you better step it up. But they're not like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. I can't believe RuPaul is keeping her, which sometimes happens, and the viewers can see why. And this is one of those cases where RuPaul is keeping Silky. But I will say that the fact that the viewers hate her means it's almost guaranteed she will not win a crown. I would, I would be genuinely shocked if she won because they do the big delay. And I think RuPaul's at a point in this series where she is paying attention to how people feel, and she's not going to pick a winner that's not go that's not going to sell tickets. She's looking around. Um, I think that plays a big part. So there you go. So I'm just going to say I don't I don't get Silky. I just don't get it. I don't have a problem with her. I don't want to shoot her out of a cannon. I don't hate her. Anyway, I just would say that because, you know, people, some of the fans get so crazy intense and they're so mean. And I don't want to be mean. I don't want, uh, I get really mean reviews. I write books, by the way. In case anyone is curious, I will do a video on that. But um, I get bad reviews all the time. And the ones that really bother me is when they're like, you should quit writing, blah, blah. It doesn't happen a lot, I, you know. But you get bad reviews. You're not the author for every person. So I kind of felt like if Silky watched this, I understand that you probably would disagree with me, but I wouldn't want her to be like, wow, I feel so badly about myself. I'm, you know. So anyway, so they, um, Brooklyn won the reading challenge. Once again, to me, it was all so kind of meh to where I, I, I wouldn't have picked Brooklyn, I, but I can't even remember who I would have picked. So, the, but the first thing Brooklyn did is not pick Vanjie, which was a little bit like, ugh. You know, because they're a little couple. But uh, she had a good reason for it, which is that Nina is the best actor there. She's the best, you know, performer in that sense. And she felt like she needed the help. Um, and then she partners everyone else up. Sugar with Silky, Banji with Plasti, Evie with Acaria, and Brooklyn has Nina. So they go through... Um, they were they were okay. There wasn't one that I walked away from and was like, oh my gosh, the Best to me, by and far, was Brooklyn and Nina, and I felt a little bad. Nina had wanted to switch so they could each kind of push out of their box, and Brooklyn said no. And um, they kind of tried to make a moment where Nina, uh, I thought Nina was really kind about it. You know, she felt like Brooklyn kind of stole the spotlight because she has a bigger role. Can you really steal the spotlight? You know, I, th I think so, especially in scene partners. I My notes felt that Sugar and Silky were... Eh, I just didn't laugh. That was the hip pads thing. Um, black market butt pads. Sorry, I was trying to read my notes and I was like, what does that say? I just thought I was eh. I wrote eh. 
Explanation point, because I felt very strongly that it was eh. Um, I wrote Evie and Icaria. Also, I kind of put meh. Both of them were like um, stand-up that should work, but for some reason isn't. It, it just, for me, didn't work. The cat fights, I put a little no, a little sad face. I knew they were going to be the bottom, and Brooklyn and Nina were on the top. It was pretty obvious. I, I think what, what the Brooklyn's terrible, ratty, long, blonde win was awful. But Nina's mullet wig could have done that skit all on its own. That wig was so perfect. It was like, just crazy. I, I, I could have, I could have had that, you know, just that. So it's, I, I feel bad not being more animated about this episode. I just felt like it was just going to fade into the background. It didn't frustrate me, but not a lot happened. Afterwards, Nina was a little concerned that she might slip into the bottom because she, um, Brooklyn didn't, you know, was out there doing the scene kind of on her own and, um, and didn't give a cue for Nina. And so eventually Nina just had to come in and Brooklyn was kind of talking over her, but Nina was pretty nice about it. She's like, I don't think she's doing it on purpose. I don't think. And then they got a little bit of shade from Brooklyn saying, well, you know, I don't know why Nina's so upset. You know, she's just kind of a downer. That's the, the most that happened this episode, which after every other episode is pretty, pretty not much. <laughs> Sorry, I got a text from my husband. He's upset he passed his test because otherwise he could quit taking this class. Um, so they're doing the face kini. I don't know. I thought this whole episode was kind of like, because I don't like the face kini thing. I think, I think the the actual face painting of drag is really interesting to me. I didn't know I felt this way until I watched the episode and I was like, this wrong one? I'm like trying to write something for each one and I'm like, sugar, rose, silky cockroach, Brooklyn, steeple, temple? What did I write? Steampunk, which is, I like a cool, is a cool reference. Nina had the gigantic eyelashes which I thought made this, to me, that made the look a lot more interesting. Vanjie did not have a leotard, but uh, had, uh, what did she call them, stirrup pants, and so they were just like, and they kind of moved separate. Um, plastique, I think that, once again, you know, Plastique is in, uh, has kind of a similar silhouette. She had more variations than Vanjie, which is why I don't think that they got on her the same way they did Vanjie. And then Icaria... Love, oh, love the commentary. So she had a very, uh, a point of view with this outfit, as you would say. There's clearly, let's talk about plastic surgery. Um, I, so I was so confused. So when they, I knew that Vanjie and Plastique were on the bottom. And I knew that, I see, I knew that Brooklyn and Nina were on the top. And so I was really conf confused when they, I wasn't surprised by Evie and Nina going away. But I was like, oh, okay. So this really bothered, it really bothered me that that Silky did not paint her face. Because, and I think that's why I didn't like the the, the um, face kini idea. Um, I'm sure it has a great history in drag. But for me, it wasn't visually very interesting. It wasn't something that gave a big amount of presence. Um, you know, it, so when I wrote down Silky, I, my note says, Wait, Silky's on the top? Because I really didn't believe it. I thought they were going to read her to death for not really... the. Uh, she she was not a fly. She was a cockroach. I mean, there's just no way. Um, and uh, the face wasn't done. And they talked about her talking over people. And I just didn't... I, I was just genuinely confused how she was in the top and not Nina. I thought Nina... I didn't think Nina had done enough to win. Um, and then Sugar was in the bottom, and I didn't think, I, see, I would have just put Vanjie and Plastique in the bottom, and I would have put Brooklyn in, Akaria did, did, uh, well, that's the thing is, I didn't think Akaria did that great, but her outfit was excellent, so I was a little confused, yeah, well, I was a little confused, so I don't feel really strongly like, this is a travesty, you know, and flip the table and everything, but it was more of like, oh, did I miss something in the episode? And then, um, but I did enjoy Untucked with Nina and Evie talking behind the scenes. So it looks like we're, hey, 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 stop it. So I think, I think we're still kind of trucking along. I, I, I still think, Akira's kind of finding her ground, has, she had a win. I had picked her for someone who maybe was going to be going soon. Same with, I thought Stokey would be going soon, but she's just trucking along in the top. So I will, 
I think she, based on their reaction to her, um, she's going to probably make the top three, which I'm not crazy about. But like I said, all of her competitors seem to like her. Um, even, you know, even... I know her and Evie have some problems, but so maybe she's better than in person. I don't know. Anyway, um, are you, we're down to seven. So it's time for you to start putting together your final three. I think based on the judging, Brooklyn, Ivy, Silky, that is, that is where we're going. Ivy's a little precarious because it, well, of course next week it makes it look like she's terrible. Um, oh, Eve, I keep saying Ivy. Evie, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with that. So Evie, um, but uh, Sugar Vanjie and Carrie can easily take, I would say, that third spot. So I would say those three, you could take one of them and replace. I'm going to say Evie. I would prefer Silky. I would prefer people I would go and watch. Nina, Brooklyn, Evie. Um my second rung would be, I really like Vanjie. I just oh, I just have a really hard time thinking that she's going to pull it off. Nina is, is one of those people that I love, and I just feel like RuPaul doesn't quite get. She has been safe almost the whole season, but I don't think she should have been. So there you go. So anyway, tell me who your top three are.